the issue of contract work, especially the hotel sector, has been a vexed one, especially for the largest trade union in Jamaica, and dare I say, the Caribbean, the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, BITU. Its Assistant General Secretary, Colin Virgo, has sounded off on the issue repeatedly, uh, saying that it must stop and it must stop now. Allied to that issue is the matter concerning the trade unions and their negotiations with the government on behalf of the workers they represent, uh, talking about about the compensation uh, reclassification and reorientation package that has been worked on and which led several groups of workers to take to the streets earlier this year. That's all packed into the first two segments of the conversation this week. And my guest is Colin Virgo, Assistant General Secretary of the BIT. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, George. Good, good, good. Thank you. Excellent. Everybody. Uh, let's start here. If the International Labour Organization, the ILO, yeah, thank you for that round of applause. If the International <laughs> Labour Organization, ILO, says contract work is fine, what is the problem that the BITU has with it? Because, um, thanks again, George, for having us. And I'm, I'm very, very happy to be given this platform to explain this. And I'll try to do it as simply as possible. Yes, sir. The reason that it, that it poses a challenge is because Jamaica is a signatory to the ILO Convention on Decent Work. And a part of the Decent Work agenda speaks to contract work. And to break it down in very simple terms, it basically means that contract work is permitted under three parameters, mm. three broad parameters. One, what you could call relief work. Mm -hmm. right? So somebody goes on leave mm -hmm. and there's a space to be filled, you know, um, paternity leave, maternity leave, something of the sort, there's a space to be filled. You need a body to fill that space. Yes, sir. Right? So it's not a permanent um, um, slot. Right? It's, it's a temporary vacancy that you need somebody to fill temporarily. Yes. So, so that's one. Two, then you have what you, what you could term supplemental work. So take, for example, I, I represent the staff at Berger Paints. There's a period of the year, particularly from September downwards, when production is way higher mm -hmm. than any other time of the year. People want paint at Christmas. Be precisely, right? So it, it is the norm that for those latter few months of the year, a couple of what you would call casuals mm -hmm. would be taking on mm -hmm. to carry the additional workload, mm -hmm. the additional workload that does not exist mm -hmm. for all. For the bulk of the year. For, for the bulk of the year, mm -hmm. precisely. And then the third scenario now is what you call fixed-term contracts. Mm -hmm. Now, fixed-term contracts are really only supposed to exist where you have a fixed-term project being done. Mm -hmm. For example, a man building a house for you. Mm -hmm. He can't make a carry out a building a house um, um, for you. The man must take either six months a year, yes. uh, whatever is the yes. defined period that, that it would reasonably require to carry out that assignment and do that. So Correct. those are the, those are the only three conditions mm. under which people are supposed to be subjected to contract work, George. Mm. It's it's not right because when people are contract workers, they can't plan their life. Yes. How do we get a mortgage? Mm. So they must live in, in rent house forever. Mm. Right? Can't even go and buy a little care. So they must take taxi and bus um, um forever. Mm. There is no peace of mind. There is no stability mm. with which you can properly plan your life. How is that fear? Mm. How is that reasonable? Mm. But here's the thing, though. The BITU, for instance, has been around since 1938, 84 yes. years old. Yeah? Yes. Oldest in the Caribbean yes. and, and, and biggest. It, it, it's General Workers itself. Union, yes. General, good. It knows about modernization. And where I'm going with this is this. Economies across the world now, in the developing world, and of course, certainly in the developed world, where we take most, if not all, our cues from, whether that's wrong or right. The gig economy, you know, is expanding very fast. And the gig economy is awash with contract workers. And by the very nature of it, you're going to have contract workers in the gig economy. So you have established sectors and, 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 and industries which have taken on what they've seen the gig economy do, taking on workers for three months, extended for three months, extended for three months. And this is what you talk about, the uncertainty, not knowing if at the end of these three months are going into another three months. But it's the reality, the modern reality, of how workers are employed in the main. 
why is it that the trade union, rather than look to pick a fight with those who are employing workers under these conditions, not try to find a way to meld the reality of no with the fact that people want employment and try to find a way to get this, this, this thing, I don't want to say regularized, but to get it, to, to, to streamline it in such a way that it benefit the workers, rather than say, cut it off, stop it now, because I'm saying it's impractical. Well, you know, well, you know again, I'm so happy that you asked this question, you know. And I know you thought you had me cornered it. No, 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 not but, yet, not but yet. But let me tell you. Yes. Let me, a few weeks ago, there was an, a general election in Grenada. That, you are also an avid sportsman and sports broadcaster. Yes. So you, you appreciate sports a lot more yes. than others. The NDC won the election. That was more than a come from behind win. The Con Mitchell retired Keith. Eh? Yes. Hmm? Come from behind win. Yes. A man who was leader of the party for not even nine nine months. Yes. Never had any representational experience. Was never a councillor, yes. mayor, senator, nothing. Yes. Right? And won. You know why? Yes. The NDC made stuck to their message during the campaign and they made two singular promises. Well, three, but two in particular that resonated with the workers of the country. Yes. One they committed to eliminating contract work by law. Mm. And two, they committed to providing pensions for Grenadians by law. Mm -hmm. So the long and short of it is, mm. anybody who wants to be government yes. needs to win the workers. Yes. Mm? Well, 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 here's the thing then. I, I, I know you thought you had me cornered with that one, but here's the reality. You didn't mention the big one. <laughs> there was a court-mandated <laughs> payment that public sector workers ought to have gotten that Mr. Mitchell promised, well, Deacon Mitchell promised to act on immediately if voted to office. I'm certain that resonated with the voters who put him in and said bye-bye to Keith Mitchell, uh, who has signaled that he's retiring. And that's, that's one thing. And then the big thing is this. You could not expect anything different in terms of the legislative promise to outlaw contract work in an economy where the number of registered voters in Grenada, Colin Virgo, was 85,706. It's a tiny economy. So it is not fair to extrapolate from an economy as small as that to compare with somewhere like Jamaica, where we have the, 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 the public sector alone employs you know, almost one, uh, uh, several know, hundred thousand you know, people. You know, and other you know, bigger economies. You know, George, yes. you're, you're trying to be clever, you know. But, no, but, but, I'm trying to be factual. No, man, no, no. You're trying to be clever. Factual. But what, but what are the facts? Yes. The fact is that similar laws exist in far more developed economies than those. Australia, the United Kingdom. A matter of fact, you know, I hear some attorneys in recent times, probably one or two more than most of the rest, they're busy trying to look at stripes. Mm. But I hear them running off them out in the media all the time talking about how Jamaica's labor laws um, are biased towards the workers. And it's biased against the employers. And our labor laws are too harsh and too rough. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. A lot of our labor laws still pale in comparison to what obtains in even our former um, colonizers, the United Kingdom, in several other countries of the world, Canada, Australia. No, 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 no. This issue about economies of scale is irrelevant. And irrelevant in that context because at the end of the day, the labor laws seek to provide justice, fairness, and protection to each worker, to, mm. each, to each person. It is the same thing that every other aspect of justice does. Mm. So far, as a matter of fact, what a lot of people have never thought and stopped and considered and this is why it is so disappointing to hear lawyers, George, saying these sorts of things. Because they are the last persons who should be talking that sort of nonsense and gibberish. And, they, and as a matter of fact, any attorney who has said that, they owe an apology to their entire fraternity and to the people of Jamaica because they would have been intellectually deceiving them. But why are they doing that, George? Right. Be, or, or why do I say that? Yeah. Because the protections afforded to the Jamaican worker under our labor laws, which were so hard fought for, yes. are still a shade less 
than that that is provided to the most depraved criminal that those same lawyers represent. Yeah, but, but, but I, I, that's where I'm going with it because I think you're being hard on the attorneys, you know, because I'm saying defense attorneys. Being hard on them, oh, 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 I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Yes. A worker yes. who is wrongly dismissed yes. from their work. Somebody yes. earning a little, a little 30, 40, 50,000 dollars. Yes. Right? They are wrongfully dismissed from their job. You know what happened? Yes. When you are a criminal and you're going to a house in, in um, Clarendon and you kill the mother and four um, picnic, if you can't afford for your lawyer, if you can't afford for representation, mm -hmm. the government pay for that for you yes. as a criminal. That is not afforded to the worker. Yeah, but, but, but hold on, hold on. They're yeah. on their own. You're going, you're going before the fact because the person... Why the lawyers don't talk about that? But let me, let me, let me, let me say it to you. Mm -hmm. Let me say it to you. But, but let me say it to you. But it is their job. Let me say it to you. Because justice is to be afforded let, to let, everybody. Yeah, exactly. And... And you don't change the law and, to catch the, the and, guilty and, and the punishment. And, and, and Colin Verba. And the innocent. And Colin Verba. The mm -hmm. man in the case you mentioned is only an accused. Yes. Yes. So the government is duty bound to provide representation for anybody accused of a crime. Ah. So, so, so the example doesn't quite sit. No, no, yes, no, no. Yes, no. It, does. yes it, no, no, it doesn't. Judge, it, yes. it more than sits. Oh. Because, and, and I'm saying to yes. you again that a little worker mm -hmm. who has been wrongly treated. Yes. So whether their matter has to end up at mediation, conciliation, yes. IDT, or court. Yes. Right? They have to find that money on their but, own but hold on. to get you, you, protection. The criminal don't have you, that burden. You, you bring the IDT in it. Hold on. The criminal but, don't have on. that you, burden. You bring the IDT in it. <laughs> you can tell me if my if my if my statistic is wrong. Because the last I heard... And this is why unions the, have saved so many workers last I heard, in this country. The last because I heard, unlike lawyers, yes. them don't have to pay us one extra dollar no matter where it ends up. The last, I heard, each of the, the last I heard was that employees win over 90% of matters that go before the IDT. When, oh, let me finish it now. Uh, I'm ready for employees your Employees <laughs> in dispute with their employers win over 90% of the time when they go before the Industrial Disputes Tribunal. So, it, 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 and, and I'm sure you'd accept that as true because you know that, you, you know the numbers better than Just I Just tell me when I can yeah? answer, man. Yeah, you can answer, you, you can answer after this. So I'm saying, the point <laughs> I'm making is this. Employees and representation, yeah, where, where labor matters are concerned, the empl I can understand why lawyers defending the employers feel some kind of way to put it in the base, exp in the base expression, Colin. No, Trump. no, George. You why see? not? No, man. Why not? You don't need to take any sympathy yes. for them, you know, yes. right? Because it is not your fault nor mine mm. that they continue to be beaten in these cases yes. after, after all the bluster and the loud noise and the beating of chest. Yes. And as a matter of fact, so first of all, 89% consistently, 89% mm. of the cases at least that end up at the IDT involve non unionized employees. Mm -hmm. right? True. You know, part of the reason for that, where unions represent workers, we try to resolve issues as quickly and as amicably as possible. There's a little bit of selfishness um, in it, too. Um, Self interest. I am prepared to, to admit, um, admit yeah, because yeah. truthfully, unlike lawyers who bill you by the hour, so the longer the matter drags on, they stand to um It's a dead fee you get. To, to um, benefit. We, we don't get pay, pay yeah. over time. Yeah. And whether the process takes six minutes, six months, six weeks, six days, six years, six decades, eh, we are duty bound to carry through the matter to the end yeah. without any additional but, 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 compensation but, but, unlike the lawyers yeah, but come back to the so point it, 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 so it is in the lawyer's interest yes. to drag these yes. matters out so so they will do all kind of contortions yes. and not have the matter settled at local level so that they can bill you for some additional yes. hours to go to conciliation and then bill you for some additional yes. hours to go to mediation and then bill you for some additional but, hours to go to IDT. Come back. Bill you for some additional come back, hours come back, come to go to the court. Come, bill you for some additional hours come back to, to, the a, question, to, to he, um, he, go to the uh, come back court. To the As I had to point out Wait, to no. a company once, yes. when we were at the Ministry of Labour one day, yes. starting from 10 o'clock the Friday morning, when we were... Six, it reached 6 o'clock the Saturday morning and we were still there. Yeah. And I called over one of the principals at the company one side at one point when the two parties were, were, were had been separated and were a lot of it. And I said, look here, let me ask you something. I said, walk come to the window here. Look downstairs in the parking lot there. You see that Ben's SUV there? I happen to know that your 
what your lawyer's going rate is. Right? So you multiply now the amount of hours that we have been here and the amount that your lawyer charges you per hour. Mm. Me say you have just bought your lawyer yes. and another one of that. But come back to the mm. question. Hold on. Huh? I'm saying. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Hold on, George. No, no, no. When I brought that yeah. matter to the attention yeah. of the principal yeah. of the company, yeah. after we were there for 16 hours yeah. and, and couldn't resolve yes. the matter resolve in 20 minutes. But hold on, I'm saying. Come back <laughs> to the question. I'm saying to you, rather than fight companies on the use of contract workers, and by the way, you thought you said, oh, you thought I had gotten you. This is where I'm going to get you now. <laughs> the same government, the same government that is in power now, yes. that, is, that gave birth, the same party that gave birth to your, well, your union gave birth to the party. That's correct. The, party before the, that, the, the, uh, the union before the party. That's correct. Yeah? The, the, the only the one. The before only JMP. one. Fine. But there's a strong mm -hmm. relationship there even now. This, this same government, the same contract workers that you at BITU would want to not be engaged under those terms. Your government, your party, count them in the employment census at every period under starting and say, oh, there are X number thousands of people in employment. There are 50,000 more women in, in, in employment. The unemployment rate has fallen. We are patting ourselves on the back. We have done a good job. You can't have your cake and eat it because the companies that employ these workers on contract terms will tell you that, well, look, if we can't employ them this way, maybe we couldn't have had so many of them on the payroll to start with. Maybe some companies will tell you, well, I wouldn't have any at all because I can't afford to take them on otherwise. So that is why, Colin Virgo, you and the BITU ought to modernize your approach rather than taking a sledgehammer to this problem is no, my you submission. See, no, you see, no, no, you see, no, you even... We have to take the break. We have to take the break. My producer <laughs> said they have to take the break. I, to, I told you I'd get you. I told you no, I'd get you. I'm coming you back. I'm coming back. Yeah? I'm coming back. After the break, much more on this discussion about contract workers in Jamaica and how the trade unions see the issue and what we ought to do about it. with us on the conversation my guest is an energetic assistant general secretary of the Bustamante industrial trade union colin virgo the bitu is the oldest and the largest multi-sector trade union in the caribbean and uh, if you know your history you'll know that it gave birth uh, to the jamaica labor party colin virgo before the break i put to you that the government is self-served by the arrangements under which many workers are attached to an employer on, on a contract basis. They count them in their periodic uh, em em employment and labor surveys. And so uh, many companies can correctly say that, look, you know, were we not able to take X number of workers on contract terms, maybe we wouldn't have these workers at all attached to our payroll and giving them a salary every fortnight or every month. And maybe we couldn't take some at all. Some entities would tell you. So isn't that enough? Isn't that grist for the mill to put you down the path of saying, well, how can we improve the arrangement rather than by edict say to employers, stop this now, cease and desist? But I, you know, there's a term that you used a while ago. And the term you used was sledgehammer approach, you know suggesting that we're trying to mash up something. We're not trying to mash up anything. Well, we cease and desist no. meaning, no, bam, no, 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 you're man. destroying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Build a man. Build yeah, man, I'm building. I'm building. I'm building. Now, follow me. Yeah, man. The Bustamante Industrial Trade Union has the pride and distinction of being able to say that even where others in zealousness or whatever else it, it was may have done so in the past, of the 13 unions, in, well, real unions in Jamaica, the registered ones, <laughs> and those are the ones that call themselves um, unions. This is the only one, multi-sector one, that can say outright mm, that we have never caused a company to go out of business before. Mm. Right? No, no, no. And the truth is, in this modern era, Every union by now, I am sure, I'm confident, has learned 
from those mistakes of the past for those who may have done so. Yes. Eh? It is, it, you, I heard you use another term, self-serving. Yes. It is self-serving for unions, for businesses that they represent to do as well as possible. For, for sure. Eh? Yes. To do well. Yes. So as a matter of fact, I can tell you that even in some companies, and had I gotten your permission before I came on this interview, I could name some yes. and, and tell you. Even some companies that were hostile to us, when we just would have started representing their workers, they have the maximum respect for us now because we have helped to keep the entire industrial relations environment in harmony, harmonized, in good order, in good shape. Me, particularly as a union officer, when a worker is wrong, me, me are the first man to tell me no. Mm -hmm. Now I go tell him in front of management. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. But when a worker is wrong, I'm the first man to tell him, say, boss, man, you can't do that. Or this can't go so. Yes. And I defend them and I do what I have to do, but we don't defend slackness. Yes. We don't defend breach of rules. Our founder, the founder of our union, Sir Alexander Bustamante, First Prime Minister of Jamaica, he had one very straightforward and simple rule for everybody yes. who walked through that union yes. door. Labor and capital must coexist, yes. none to the detriment of yes. the other. Correct. What does that mean? Yes. So to answer your question, yes. a, man, a man start a business not to hire people. Yes. He start a business to make money. Yes. Eh? At the end of the day, though, he can't make the money if he don't hire some people. Yes. So what does the law say? All we, all we are saying to people is follow what the law says. You know? mm. So the law says you have these three conditions under which they can be contract work. Mm. Right? Outside of that, if you have somebody who is working there, working there beyond, beyond the three, six months, whatever the probation period um, is, and has satisfied you that they are a good worker yes. and that they can do the job, and you clearly have a long-term vacant position that is there that needs to be filled and you have found that talent that can fill the position, you owe it to that person mm. to follow the law mm. and to regularize them and have them as a permanent employee so that they can plan their life. Mm. And if that employee... So I know one of the arguments that business people come with all the while, that boy, but because of the labor laws, you can't fire nobody. Absolute nonsense. Mm. Absolute nonsense. And I am not speaking from a veiled point of view. Yes. The first thing I did when I left university, I started a business. Mm. Right? More than one. Yes. Right? Me and my friends started businesses um, together. My family still runs a business. But just as the law is written in such a way to protect the innocent man who is accused of a crime mm. from going to prison as much as is possible. The labor laws are just the same. Yes. Right? So it's not that the labor laws are biased to one side or the other. The labor laws have been written in a way to protect people from victimization and vulnerability. But, but, see, but the question for you is this. Will you... Will what you, you, say, you, say no, you say no sledgehammer. You say no sledgehammer. No. But, but hold on. Hold no, on. I, I, no sledgehammer. But, but listen. No sledgehammer. The way you are conducting this interview is... Consistent with how Colin Virgo has always been. Front foot, striding. No problem. Yeah, Hold on. I'm saying to you, on such an important issue, it was so important, you spoke about this at the remembrance ceremony for the, the, His Excellency Sir Alexander, his birthday in Blenheim in Hanover. Yes, you I took it this. to the ILO yes. again. That and you took it, exactly. So it's, it's, it's signally important to the BITU. I'm saying, don't you think the cease and desist message Community, that, that's a verbal sledgehammer that you're using. And no, 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 hold, no, on, hold, hold on, that's unfair. Hold on, hold that's on. unfair. No, no, it can't be unfair when you're here to defend. That's unfair. It. If, mm. it would be unfair if you weren't here to defend. You're here. So, no, it's not unfair. Yeah? Mm. The, the verbal sledgehammer. That, 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 you, that you could say, listen, you know what? You link Clifton Reader, head of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association. Clifton, you know, I know some of your members have these arrangements. You know? We wanted to. To, to stop and for the, the, the hiring practices to accord with the labor laws. However, yes. I, I know the realities may cause some people to not be able to, to move in the way that we desire. What about ameliorating the situation? Look, if a man has been attached to you for 
for consecutive cycles under contract and he comes to you because he needs a letter of undertaking to take to courts or to take to I almost said home electrics but that locked down from where we were, little, we were children <laughs> any of the big 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 stores that sell items that people need for households a car or whatever let's let's put that in and see if we can put in some of the things that are constant and consistent in a set and proper employment contract don't you think you would make more progress than this posture of belligerence that is communicated by cease and desist. Stop it now. Well, you know, two things to that, George. First of all is if I am going to be accused of a sledgehammer and belligerence by asking people to obey the law, Right. Well, uh, well, accuse me, accuse me right away. Right. Because people must follow the law. Oh. All the rest of all the rest of us are obligated to follow the law. Right. But the moment you start giving one blay mm. in one aspect and mm. in one ear and in mm. one one aspect, with what moral virtue do you stand but, to uphold any other law? But call it a blay. No, 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 it's, it it it's, it's a journey so. to the final destination. As a matter of fact, you're right. You're it's right. a journey to the final destination. You're right. No, 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 what? it's not a blay. It's what? a blind eye. No, right? it's not no, a blind eye no, either. No, no, it is. It's, 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 it is. It's, it's, it's how you get... Remember, you know, you open... George, you, I thought you were going to allow Colin, me to answer. I'm, I am. Colin, mm? you open. I, I gave you the example. No, I told you. I gave you the example. I'm going to give two points. You haven't allowed me to finish the first one. Hold on, Colin. I gave you the scenario. I said to you, that your aim is to cut this out. I know on that the I'm, the, I know that I'm the most exciting yeah, person to have come on your show. Really? Now, but you still have to give me a man. Well, I'm here all the while. So, so you, you, <laughs> know <laughs> the yeah? you know the second one. You know the second one. Right? But, yeah. but, 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 but you have to be fair to me. So, yeah. so, so it's a little um, nebulous mm. to try to, to suggest that it is belligerence or anything of the sort. Strident, yes. Mm. Assertive, yes. You have yes. to be. You have yeah, to be. Right? Right. Passionate, he, he, absolutely. He, here's my thing now, though. Right. I heard you say that you assisted companies to you assisted companies to maintain harmonious industrial relations. Yes, all of us. Hold on, hold on. Yes, hold on. Hold That's on. important. So too. here's my thing. Here's my thing now. Here's my thing now. So the score to me, based on my account, is one nil. Yeah. One for me, zero for you. This I is think, two nil now. I think you have a bit, a bit is, of challenge with is, arithmetic, but it's okay. This is two nil now. Mm. This is two nil now. Here's the thing. In your dreams, here's what two, are here, Here's two mm. nil now. Here's two nil now. <laughs> here's to, work with me. The largest mm. trade union mm. by membership in the United Kingdom is Unison. You know this right, very well. Right, yeah. yeah? yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and you know that Unison very close to the Labour Party. Yes. Yes? And it walks in lockstep with the Labour Party. In fact, when Len McCluskey was General Secretary of what was UNITE, that's correct. They were very. He was very close with. Uh, well, until they fell out, Mr. Jeremy Corbyn, the former Labour Party leader, correct. Keir correct. Starmer, and McAnee, the lady who re re replaced Prentice last year, that's have that good re relationship now. So I'm just emphasizing the relationship. So you're going to a new hold question. Hold on. No, 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 you no, never no, 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 keeps it in the loop. Yes. I have a bone to pick with the BITU. Yeah, man. Go ahead, Because man. here's the thing. You come here. I know exactly where you're going. You, of, go, course, go, you know, go, of course, go, of course, go, of course go, I'm yeah, going man. there. Yeah, man. Go there, man. You come here and brag about how you help businesses to maintain harmonious working relations. Mm -hmm. And yet, when public sector workers took to the streets in protest and caused the JLP administration a black eye, the BITU was nowhere to say, oh, Finance Minister, this is on the horizon. You know, um, we need to do this to head off. Or, Labour Minister, this is happening. And you know very well mm -hmm. that I know what you know and that I know that the BITU <laughs> did not <laughs> act in the way that Unison would have acted if this were the UK and the Labour Party was in power. How did you drop the ball with telling your government that industrial troubles were on the horizon, but you're here bragging about how you helped companies to maintain harmonious relations? Respond well, to that. Well, well... Two nil. Go ahead. In your dreams, man. Um, very quickly, George. Aside from the fact that 
and I know you're referencing the NWC strike and all that. Aside from the fact that the NWC is a multi represented entity. In other words, there are several unions that represent different categories of workers. That's how you start. In the National Water Commission. Aside from, the aside from that fact, unions, when we have discussions with employers, we don't take those discussions to the media. So with the greatest of respect, the media didn't ask you for information, but your government should have gotten the information. With, with but go the, ahead. With the greatest of yes. with the greatest of respect. Yes. I don't know what has caused you to yes. feel or believe yes. that they were unaware. Yes. That there was trouble looming. You know how I know they were they, they were unaware? Because when Helene Davis White, the general secretary of Jalgo, your colleague in the trade union business. Yes. When she appeared on this program, she said something that stunned me. She said the strike, which was two days, could have been one day, but when the meeting involving the labor minister and the finance minister happened on day one, and the labor minister signed off on the seven point agreement, or how many of her points were on it, mm -hmm. finance couldn't sign because they sent a footling member who lacked the authority to sign. So it had to go back, go to a financial <laughs> secretary who had to go to minister who pushed it into the next day. That's what, hold on, no. you ask me how I know, you know. So I'm telling you. So I'm saying, this no, was not the. No, I, but you're making. No, 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 no. hold on, no. the information minister no. came the week after and sat there and said, we were caught unawares. So unless you know something I don't know about them knowing and telling know lies that they knew, come on now. I know quite a lot. Of that, course you do. That's why you're here. That you don't know. Of course. That's why and you're I'm here. And I'm saying to you. Yes. And I'm saying to you, George, that to say that they were, they were unaware that trouble was on the horizon. No, we'd have, we'd just have broken as, out in that just way. Just as all. We'd have broken out in that way. We'd have broken out in that way. Sir, sir, sir. We'd have broken out in that way. Tell me when I can talk. You can talk now. We'd have broken out in that way. Tell me when I can talk. Broke, you, can, you, can talk you can talk, of course. Saying that somebody did not know before. That trouble would have broken out that way. Saying that somebody did not know before mm -hmm. that there was trouble on the horizon does not automatically transmit into them believing that it was going to actually happen. That was the difference. No. That was the difference. Come again. Right? Take some so, more time and come no, again. No, 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 no. So I am telling you. Yes, sir. I am telling you. Mm -hmm. We told them repeatedly. I personally was a part of the meetings because we had some joint meetings to deal with, with these things, particularly as it, as it relates to NWC and the National Irrigation Commission, for which I happen to be the union officer, right a hero circle, right a ministry of finance. Mm -hmm. Ourselves as union officers from the various uni unions and the various delegates, we told them up to a few weeks before that, that the workers are restive and impatient. We cannot hold them out anymore. They want something concrete and definitive. But you know what happened? Yeah. There are some technocrats mm. in the ministry. Mm. They were the ones who believed that we were bluffing, that mm. we were just huffing and puffing mm. and making noise. Mm. So when, when the whole was a Jericho came tumbling down, mm. if I was still in primary school, I would look at them and say, I bear mm. me to tell you. Mm. So it's not a case of you not having influence within the whole It's 14 of years we hold them down, John. 14 it's years. It's the technocrats' fault. It's the technocrats' fault. And I am putting it squarely at their foot. Let's take the break and come right back. We're talking with Colin Virgo, Assistant General Secretary of the Most of Anti Industrial Trade Union. He's in fine form. Much more on this conversation after me. I almost said. <laughs> on the conversation speaking with the Assistant General Secretary of the Boston Anti-Industrial Trade Union, Colin Virgo. Let's, let's, let's deal with a, a, another issue now concerning the recent announcement by the Finance Minister concerning paternity leave, the extension, well, the introduction of paid paternity leave 
and the extension in maternity leave from effectively 40 days to about 90, he did say three months, but approximately 90. And I saw one uh, bargaining unit, one trade union group uh, say, well, this is the government listening and acceding to what the unions collectively have been lobbying for. Uh, is it is it is it is it a victory for the trade union movement, or is it the way that it has been announced by the finance minister insufficient based on what you would have asked for, based on your assessment of the situation? All right, I'll answer that in two ways. The first way I'll answer that is that it is a step in the right direction, and I'll go further to say that. And this one, I I, I think I have permission to take tales out of school with. This business of paternity leave is a feature that is put in every single solitary claim submitted by the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union. As a matter of fact, um, I, I, it's a pity I didn't work with a copy of it. There's an article that I would have written in the, in, in the, um, that would have come out in the newspaper about a, at least a decade or so ago. But roughly around when I would have, a little after, I would have just started full time in the union where I was speaking to the very same things that 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 paternity leave we're talking about modernizing the modern way of the world mm. paternity leave should be a mandatory feature of every heads of agreement in every company mm -hmm. as a matter of fact even my boss Senator Gale that's a matter he would have raised in the Senate more than once and tabled motions as, as a matter of fact that is even why, from as far back as 2018, you would have heard when, when Nigel Clark just became Minister of Finance, you would have heard him speak actually to paternity leave more than once, and speak to the fact that the that the legislation for it is being put in place in our parliament. That came from the BITU, mm. right? There, um, we represent workers at Rubis. When I first put that into a into a claim for heads of agreement about a decade ago. There were some persons in the local management who were a little hesitant about it at first, a little resistant about it at first. And to be fair to them, I just think that it was because they believed that it would not have, that it wouldn't fly yeah. with their principals, with their superiors. Yes. In, who live in developed countries. Huh? Who yeah. live in developed countries. And, mm -hmm. and I want to tell you that um, the global CEO mm. for Rubis, left from France and came here to, to Jamaica and met with me eh, when he saw that. In, and he was so impressed with it mm. that he even asked my permission at the time to implement that into Rubis's global corporate policy. Mm -hmm. And since then, since, when, since around 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. it has been instituted in every one of their corporate offices right across the seven continents mm. of the globe. But at the start of the mm. answer, at the start of the answer, you said it's a step in the right direction, suggesting that even though we have this on the table, paid paternity leave and maternity extended from 40 to 90 days, ideally you'd have wanted to see something more, something of a different complexion. Why, I chose, the, why I chose the words a step in the right yes. direction, George, is simply because as it relates to the paternity leave, yes. all of the granular details have not been finalized. Mm. So, so um, you know... There are some of my, my colleagues um, who might have the view that uh, perhaps the, the announcement could have waited until those details were um, finalized. But I suspect that the minister was just so excited to share that, um, that, um, that um, good news. Mm. And it's not going to take away um, from where we where we have our discussions now and where we intend. I, didn't, I, di I did not hear the minister with this at the press conference, but this question immediately came to my mind. So I'm asking you, as the man who's advocating week in, week out for things like this, in a scenario where a couple adopts a baby, so the mother has the, the so, so, so six months, so I don't know what the law prescribes in terms of there's an age limit. I don't think so. And the father comes and says to his bosses at the company, all right, um, we've taken a new baby by adoption. Um, the wife, clearly a new mother, struggling with the thing. I need to lend some assistance. Can that man put in a paternity leave request or, or what kind of request? Well, again, back in? to the response that you, 
that you sought to clarify from me just now, which is why again I say it's a step in the right mm -hmm. in the right direction. Because as certainly as it relates to the to the overall thing, yeah. but but more so to the paternity side leap, there are still a number of granular details. So like that be, is undeveloped yeah. in terms of what to do. It's not finalized. Yes. Oh. Not finalized is different from undeveloped. It's developed, but you're working on to say, okay, works better this way, works better that way. It's not because 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 until we have a signed agreement mm. that says this is how it is going to work, it is still it, it is still in the works. Mm. It's still in progress. Mm. Here so here. so just to be fair to all sides. Yeah yeah. All right. So it's a step in the right direction. But but at the very least, yes, it represents a clear commitment and confirmation now. To implement to to implementing that, and that is a position from which the government would now never be able to backtrack. Mm. Right? So so this is this is almost what you would say uh, an agreement in principle. Mm. Right. So what you're going to work out now are the granular details. Yeah. Right. Are the regulations, etc. But, but here's this thing now in this age, Colin Virgo, of equity and equality. Where advocates say women and men should get equal pay for equal work and equal vacation, and you don't get more vacation because you're a man, and you don't get less vacation because you're a woman. Some people could ask, why is maternity leave 90 days and paternity leave shorter? Because I'm certain the final document we'll see will have paternity leave way short of what maternity leave is it would be it would be inappropriate for me to speculate on national television right now where we are going to end up with it mm. so though it is a possibility i can't say but your do. personal view is that equity in that sense is not equal leave for me for, for, for a father and a mother in that circumstance i mean your look, personal view i mean look in 1964, Sir Alexander Bustamante, as Prime Minister, was the first man to say, look, equal pay for equal work. And they started with the public sector. And that was how it eventually ended up, ended up spreading out to everybody else. Mm. So just like some of, some of the other issues that you have tackled me on, even since the start of this interview, mm. right, I, I am happy that the government is listening to the BITU in our internal and external meetings because one of the things that we have always said government must lead by example mm. when the government leads by they're the biggest employer in the country number yes. one secondly when they lead by example the others will follow it worked with worked with equal pay for for women it worked with 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 things like 40 hour work week vacation leave um cert, certain benefits such as seniority um, allowances, allowance, uh, uh, mm. uh, all sorts of things mm -hmm. started mostly by the governments of Sir Alexander Bustamante and Hugh Shearer. Right? Now, when the government sets particular examples, it it abodes very well for the entire um, employment cohort, and gradually and. And over time, it sets the example for people to follow. And which is in the same yeah. way yeah. that I look out on the government all the time too. That in the that in the instances outside of those three approved areas where they still have contract work, the government must not be breaking the law. Yeah. They must set the example too. A and I don't have to cost them for it. A popular narrative, Colin Virgo, is that this finance minister, this administration under Holness, Andrew Michael Holness, is looking to remove allowances from public sector workers mm -hmm. and I know that there are many of them I was a public sector worker for two years to remove those allowances roll them into the salary and tax everything and th there are many people who have that narrative when they talk to uh, various publics from your understanding as a union man inside the negotiation room I is that true I is that what the government is heading towards so the first order of business is that you would take out the word remove. Mm -hmm. So the intention is to aggregate, to compound most, if not all, of the allowances that exist and give each employee one big grand salary. How it is being proposed to be done 
is that at the end of that process, your pay will be grossed up to the point to ensure that even when the taxes come out of it, you are not going home with even one dollar less than you were the day before this was implemented. As a matter of fact, you ought to be going home with at least a little bit more. Mm. And when you, if you take up the budget of Jamaica, and you just take a cursory glance at what has been programmed for compensation over the preceding period, then post the, post the compensation review period, mm -hmm. you will recognize that this is not a, it's not a wish list. It's not a, there is no, there is no hidden agenda. Mm. There is no um, puss in a bag, mm. as Jamaican people like to say. Truth of the matter is, you know, I'm trying to, I still trying to figure out exactly how Dr. Clark is going to maintain all of his fiscal targets mm. after this is done. Mm. Because that action alone is going to move public sector compensation from 9% to, to about 14% yes. of um, GDP now, when the intention is to keep it below 10 Yes. Eh? So it is going to abort for the betterment of every single public sector worker. And George, if it benefits a public sector worker in no other way, it is guaranteed to benefit them with their pension entitlements. Mm. Let me tell you why. So you'll have a public sector worker now who their take-home pay is $150,000 for argument's sake. When you look at the breakdown of that compensation, a half of that sometimes, you know, roughly about $74,000 there about, is for a thing that they call upkeep. Mm -hmm. right? That's to assist you with your motor vehicle and mm -hmm. so if you're a traveling officer. Yes. Right? And then you'll have several other allowances. Mm -hmm. You know what happens, George? A lot of people forget that pension is only calculated on, on the basic salary. Yes. Know? You know how many people get body come down, traumatized. Mm? When pension time comes. When, when, that, when that day comes when they retire and mm -hmm. they get their first pension mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. And they were earning 150000 up to the month before. And thought it was calculated and, on the 150. And they get a pension check mm -hmm. for $20,000, mm -hmm. $18,000, $19,000, $20,000. Mm -hmm. right? They get that, that tiny pension check because it might work out to roughly about a third. But it's, but it's of the basic salary. Yeah. Right? right? So, so you're saying this cures that? This tidying up? Right away, yes. that would move that pension from roughly about in the 18, 19, 20, 20 low, low 20s, um, thousand, to um, approximately about $50,000. Yeah, yeah. Right away. Cool. If you were to take a Redundancy and early retirement and medical redundancy, anything of the sort, it would still benefit to the same because all those things by law yes. are calculated on basic salary. Colin Virgo, the time is up on us. We are done. Uh, we, we could do this for, for another hour or so. Thank you very much. Uh, the score is 2 0 to me. The, the viewers should know. The viewers should know. The, this is not your first time losing a debate to me. Yeah? So, uh, it's just the latest one. Yeah? We, we did this in university and you always lost. That's it for the conversation this week. We'll be back next week in the last episode. very bad memory, but you are still my friend. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!